against Famagusta. The domestic season opened with a visit of Green at Morton in the Coca-Cola Cup. The longest serving player at the club, Ali McCoyst, MBE, opened the scoring. Gascoigne's corner set up the second for Mark Haitley. Then Gazza got in on the act to make it 3-0. A goalless draw in Cyprus meant the Rangers qualified for the Champions League. They came home to start the defence of their title against Kilmarnock. Here's a chance for McCoyce. And it's McCall! John McCall scores for Rangers! They beat Sterling Albion. 3-2 in the third round of this competition. They were three up. Smith wasn't happy about losing two goals to Sterling, and Rangers took their anger out on Wraith, the coist again with the opener. Charlie Miller got the second. Brian Loudrup put David Robertson in for the third, and it was all over by half time. Just for good measure, Gascoigne teed up McCoist in the closing stages and it finished 4-0. The Champions League started on a lower late goal meant defeat at Steuerbrück Arrest. Smith made six changes for the league game at Falkirk on Saturday. Oleg Solenko got his first goal for the club. David Robertson's second half strike tied up the points. They're already clearing the league. Tonight, Walter Smith wants to deal their oldest rivals an early body blow. S Rangers under Walter Smith, 231 now. 155 of them lost 34, drawn 42. That's in all competitions as well. Coca-Cola Cup tonight. Incidentally, there are... 16 ties in England taking place. We'll keep you right up to date with everything that's going on. It's been an early goal at Crew. Crew nil, Sheffield Wednesday one. Mark de Greiser, the goal scorer. Stuart McCall and Charlie Nicholas are with us in the studio here this evening. And uh, Stuart, a word about Rangers now. In general, are you positive about the way things have started this season? Yeah, I mean, we've got not conceded a goal in the league for a start after three games. There's been a lot of criticism over the European performance, which was a bad performance over there. The boys know that. Um, but tonight Wallace put out a very attacking side um, people like Gascoigne, Miller in the middle of the park, mm. Loudrup, Selenko, McCoy so like he says you can't be more positive than that the good thing I think is the defence we've changed to a three three at the back Petric has come in, Richard Goff has been outstanding Andy Gorham has been his usual, you know, unflappable and th I think the, the positive base is the defence not conceding many goals Has that taken um, some adjusting too? Or? I think we're still adjusting to it also there's four new players in the side which you know, you've got to get used to that so it's just middle to front. Um, unfortunately, there's been injuries in that area. People like Ian Ferguson, Trevor Stephen, Mark Haley, now at the moment, Loudrup and Gas going in and out. So I think once we gel the middle to the front, um, the you know good defences, and that's what things are based on. What about Charlie Miller, who you mentioned there? Uh, what can we expect from Charlie tonight, those of us who have seen not too much of him? Well, he's only a young boy. He got in the team last year through basically injuries, and he's kept his place on merit and probably been one of our most consistent players since last season. I mean, you see here, uh, great challenge. And he had an absolute superb game in the debut uh, against Celtic there. And nothing flaps him at all. He's so cool. Um, finishes well. And uh, he's got a great prospect. I mean, he can only... I mean, he'll go on. And I think everyone's saying he's going to be this, that and the other. He'll be a superb player for Rangers in the years to come. And Scotland? Yeah, well, not too quick, hopefully. Hopefully I've got another year, a couple of well, years Well, I was just going to suggest that. If I was uh, out of the side at the moment and, and he was playing like that, I'd be a little concerned, wouldn't you, Charlie? That's right, yeah. He's, uh... I would be, yes. No, I'm down. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. This guy's going to play quicker than you think, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, outstanding talent. Can score, as we've seen. Uh, a big part of his game? Yeah, well, he actually played as a striker for the reserves. He scored lots and lots of goals. He's moved back. But he's an attacking midfielder, loves getting in the box. Can beat men. They're a very skillful player. And like I say, very cool, and he'll be, he'll be looking forward to this tonight. What sort of temperament? No, great, brilliant, um, thoroughly enjoyed. Like I say, made his, um, one of his first games against Celtic, at, uh, well, at Hampden, and uh, was outstanding for us that day. And I think he's going to be a big plus. Just listening to that noise there, already it's uh, beginning to build, isn't it? Uh, 
does set you tingling a little. Tommy Burns was asked the question, would you like to be involved there tonight? Oh, I'd love it. I'd love it. I haven't managed, obviously, uh, now leaving Celtic again, to miss out in the, the new stadium and the atmosphere. But I was there a couple of weeks ago when they played Wraith Rovers. And it, the atmosphere is coming from the new stand is just sensational, considering there's gaps at either side. But these guys are so happy to be back in this big time yeah. at Celtic Park. And I'll tell you, you'll hear a noise tonight that is, is, is not been heard in a long time. They're going to enjoy themselves. A little frustrating for you as well tonight, I would imagine, Stuart. You'd want to be out there, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's sickening. Um, I'm hoping to be back soon. Uh, the injury's clearing up to me now. But, yeah, just when you see, I mean, it's, you want to get out there and play. Okay. Any vantage point will do. <laughs> you can understand that as well, can't you? But those are the gaps you're talking about, Charlie, behind yeah. the goals there. Yeah, it's just, I think sometimes, you know, just we're leaving it as, as barren as that, that sometimes it can take a little bit away from it after all the work. I mean, these supporters put 24, 25 million into Celtic Football Club. They've got a marvellous half a stadium now, but they deserve it to be finished properly because, as you see, the atmosphere already, they are generating is superb, and it's their money. It'll be magnificent when it's finished, but will it almost be too big? Yeah, quite possibly now. I mean, you're talking about 60,000, but Rangers have set the standards and it's it's hard to keep up. Uh, it can be too big, but if Celtic start winning championships the way Rangers have, then it'll get filled. Mm. Are Rangers aware of the resurgence at Celtic, Stuart? Yeah, I think Celtic will be our main rivals this year, without a doubt. Like I say, with the winning the trophy last year, getting back to the stadium, signing, you know, Tom, very good player. Uh, I think they'll be our main rivals. But like tonight, it's, it's what, as Tommy Burns says, what Celtic do, it's what Rangers do. I think we'll go out there very positive tonight and hopefully we can quieten the noise. I mean, it's one good thing if they do make the stadium a bit bigger, we'll get more than 4,500 tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I needed 4,000 myself. <laughs> do you plan, there's some of the 4,500, do, do you plan for this going all the way tonight or can that not be part of, of, of your thoughts? No, I, th I think it'll be very tight. But, um, hopefully it'll be a good advert in Scottish football. Celtic Aberdeen proved that a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I know the Rangers defence won't let me say it, but I mean, if it could be 3-2, it'd be brilliant. Obviously, uh, McCoy's getting the winner off his backside would probably be the <laughs> end of the script. He'd celebrate it like he did that header we saw a moment or so ago. That's for certain. Is he back to his best? I think so. I think his people have been writing him off for a, a while now, but you need a good pre-season under him. He's back. If you get the supply that Lambert can supply, He'll score goals any time. I mean, you'll have to look at people like John Aldridge at 37, whatever he is, and he's still knocking him in. I think Coyce has got plenty of years left in him. Um, you know, no problem. Give him the service and he'll finish it off. And hopefully tonight will be one of the nights. Now, what do you think tonight? You've already given us one tip. Bradford to beat Nottingham Forest 3-0, which I, I think is possibly a little wider than Mark. But um, what about this one? I'll go 2-1. Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. McCoy to get the winner. I hope. Charlie? Well, I think it's so tight, it's hard to say. I think... Whoever scores first will win it. I don't necessarily think it will finish 1-0, but I think the team who will score the first goal will probably win it. But I wouldn't be surprised if it goes all the way. And if it does, of course, we will see it here live on Sky Sports. And what we're referring to, if you've just joined us, is that we have to have a result here tonight. No replays. There'll be extra time if it's required. And if that doesn't separate them, then it will be penalties. Right, let's get the team news confirmed now with Davy Proven. Davy. Thanks, Richard. Uh, we heard Tommy Burns tell us about his three injury doubts this evening. I suppose one and a half out of three would be the best way to describe it because looking at that Celtic side, Phil O'Donnell misses out because of a groin strain sustained against Motherwell on Saturday, but he does welcome back Andy Tom, who will partner Andy Walker up front. Pierre Van Hooydong also struggling because of a hamstring problem. He starts the match on the bench this evening. Also recalled for Celtic tonight, John Hughes, he was suspended for the Motherwell match on Saturday, but he comes in in place of Malky Mackay. Paul McStay also back in the midfield because of O'Donnell's absence, and a big test for Paul tonight, given that he's been out for some months with an ankle problem. Let's move on now to the Rangers side. Walter Smith still without long-term injuries. Mark Haitley, Ian Ferguson, Trevor Stephen, and of course Stuart McCall, who kindly joins us in London tonight. He made six changes in the side that went to Falkirk on Saturday, but it's a stronger looking Rangers side tonight because back comes Brian Loudrup, back comes Stephen Wright, and also coming off the bench to start the match tonight, Ali McCoy and Paul Gascoigne. That's the team news here from the dressing room area. Back to you, Richard. David, thank you. Live football here on Sky Sports tonight. The old firm for a place in the last four of the Coca-Cola Cup. Another break. When we come back, we'll be live at Parkhead.
From the home of sport, this is Sky Sports. When we launch a new car, we like to drop it. But because this new Polo is so solid, we thought we'd really drop it. It's spacious, aerodynamic, power steering, but above all, this is the safest Polo we've ever built. With optional twin airbags and ABS brakes. The new Volkswagen Polo. And so, gentlemen, despite the team's reasons on Lucky Run, the chairman and the board of directors have assured me, quite categorically, and without a shadow of a doubt, that they are 110% behind me, and that I have their total support. Hello, Ron. You'd better ring the Royal. Well, I've not been very well, you know. For all types of insurance, for all kinds of mishaps, you better ring the Royal. The first age of telecommunication allowed us to communicate, but only with words. Now, we're entering a new age of communication, in which telephones will transmit words and pictures, making the wonders of the world visible to everyone, everywhere. Every child will be able to read every book. Can you hear me, love? Doctors and teachers will share their knowledge with everyone who needs them. a large bore needle into the chest, below the clavicle, beneath the third rib. Is that supposed to be me? And every conversation will take place face to face. You get a kiss for your daddy. And I to I. I might have done the kiss. Few people understand the needs of today's motorists as well as QuickFit. Now we are introducing QuickFit insurance services. It was so easy. One call and I was insured. And they have 24 hour accident assistance here and in Europe. And with a comprehensive policy, QuickFit insurance services will give you a free replacement car if yours is being repaired. We've got the right policy for you at the right price. Phone QuickFit insurance services right now on 0345 470 270. The ones, the ones who brought, who brought you. you. Bruno is the champion! Bring you. Watch out! Just watch out! Prince Nassim is the number one contender for a World Super Bantamweight title. I'm the best and everybody knows it. But with no one ready to face his challenge. They just can't take the punishment, they can't take the power. He's moving up to Federal. I'm too good. And taking on seven times undefeated Steve Robinson for his WBO crowd. People want excitement, people want to be entertained. A Super Bantamweight fighting for a Featherweight title. You're looking at him. This really is big time boxing, live and exclusive. Coming soon on Sky Sports. Maybe you can take it. We are nearly there. Live football on Sky Sports tonight. Celtic against Rangers. We've been speculating on the outcome. The bookies think it's going to penalties. 15 to 8 the draw. Can't separate them. And first to score, Tom, McCoist, Selenko and Collins all offered at 7 to 1. Walker, 8 to 1. There's an interesting one further back. David Robertson there who scored two in the last seven for Rangers at 40 to 1. Stuart was saying he also got three pre-season as well, so maybe that's worth a, uh, a bet. Live tonight, it's Celtic against Rangers for a place in the last four. Our match commentators at Parkhead, Trevor Francis and Jock Brown. Have you got your pads on, Jock? Hi, Richard. Yes, this really is quite incredible tonight. I've seen countless of these matches over the years. But there's still a tingle in the spine, I can tell you. What I haven't done, and what Trevor has done, is play out there. Six players playing tonight, Trevor, who haven't played an old firm match. How are they feeling now? Well, as everybody has said, it's a special occasion. I played in a couple of them, but the one at Ibrox I remember most. It was remembered for the wrong reasons when uh, McAvenny and Chris Woods were sent off and Graham Roberts went in goal. But I think tonight, when you look at the two teams, there's so many great individuals playing. I think tonight's game will be remembered for the right things. Now, there are a lot of players out there of real quality. Who are you looking to see tonight? Well, in the Rangers side, Paul Gascoigne, Ryan Laudrup, and the young lad, Charlie Miller, just 19 years of age, is a player I'm looking forward to seeing. And for Celtic, Andreas Tom up front has made a great start. 
and in midfield of course but stay in John Collins to outstanding players well the big thought too is how Gascoigne will cope what's your view of that though? well I'm very very interested to see him play saw him recently playing for England against Colombia I thought he did uh, reasonably well he could do better but I think it's important for England that throughout the season he gradually gets his fitness better and better and tonight well, they don't come much tougher than this type of game for him well, the atmosphere building quite incredibly there. 35,000 only inside the stadium as it's being refurbished and rebuilt. Only 4,700 of them Rangers supporters. So a heavy dominance of Celtic noise and singing all around us. And that very impressive new stand opposite. And these Celtic supporters relishing a very impressive start to the new season. With Andreas Tom making such a big impact with the pity I think for Celtic tonight Trevor there's no Pierre Van Hoydonk beside him and that's a player I think you know something about yes I was tipped off about him some 18 months ago he was playing for NAC Breda over in Holland I think if I remember rightly it was against Feyenoord I went along to watch the match I was reasonably impressed with him but uh, I'm disappointed he's not starting tonight but I'm hoping that he gets on because uh, I'll be interested to see how he does this is going to be a very aggressive game tonight and I wonder if he's going to cope with the aggressiveness of this type of match. In fairness, though, Rangers have selected a side full of attacking players in midfield, Miller, Gascoigne, Loudrop supporting Salenko and McCoy. Does that surprise you, the fact they've gone for so many creative players? I think the reason for that is because it's a cup tie. They want to get it won tonight because I think when you look at the side, I think it's a big responsibility tonight on Paul Gascoigne. You mentioned Miller, you mentioned Loudrop. Loudrop likes to float. You can't call him a front player, you can't call him a midfield player. He links in between the two. So it's important with Miller going forward that Gascoigne has a responsibility in there. It'll be also interesting to see a Celtic employ somebody to mark him. Because in Peter Grant, a player I remember from my days at Glasgow Rangers, with one or two tough battles against him, he could be the man that does a man-for-man -man job on him. Another point Paul McStay mentioned there on that banner. He's playing only his second game. Came back very surprisingly on Saturday against Motherwell. Can you lift for a game like this after such a long time out? Well, I think because of the occasion, the manager would have no doubts about putting a player like McStay back into this. OK, he's only had the one game. He's an experienced player. I'm sure Tommy Burns has chatted with him, and he's given him the nod to go ahead. I think McStay and Collins are two outstanding players who are hopefully we'll see in the European Championships for the forthcoming uh, season. Also far travel supporters there from abroad on the northeast coast, all the way down to support Celtic, the singing all around. There's Jim McCluskey, the referee from Stuart and Ayrshire, one of the top officials in the country, as you might expect for a game like this. Bill Crombie, the fourth official behind him, another FIFA official. The two linesmen there, Joe Kelly and Eric Martindale. Eric Martindale there in the picture, a grade one referee, so he would stand in should Jim McCluskey have an injury. So the anticipation clear there in the faces of these Celtic supporters as they wait to greet the two teams who will, I'm sure, emerge together for this tie. And both sides coming into this in generally good domestic form. Rangers only having that set back against our Bucharest. Jim McCluskey has passed the ward to the dressing rooms. He wants to see the players come out. A very relaxed individual, vastly experienced, heavily in demand in European football. All right. And he's been over the course many times before. Yes, I think these occasions are always special affairs, but tonight I think the atmosphere is just that something different. I presume because it's a cup tie, the atmosphere is absolutely electric. I'm very, very impressed with this ground. It's my first visit here. And it really captures the noise and it keeps it. It should be a great occasion, Jock. Well, a little bit of tension there in the face of the Celtic captain, Paul McStay. Very big match. This is the first old firm match of the season. It makes such a difference in the city of Glasgow until the next game, which is only a little over a week away. A week on Saturday. Just players lining up behind Richard Goff, the captain there on the left. Just listen to the reception for the two teams. Small 
second Fingent Nail Rangers fans beating their favourites, but the abundance of noise backing Celtic in the new Celtic Park. Well, confirmation, of course, coming up of the Celtic team. Injuries affecting them, of course. Phil O'Donnell, the goal scorer on Saturday against Muller, was out. And Pierre Van Hoydon fit only to take a place on the bench. But Andreas Thomas fit, and he'll be partnered up front by Andy Walker. Paul McStay playing only his second game of the season after injury. Well, this is the Celtic side, and they're line up with Varta Hughes, Boyd and McKinley forming the back four. The real backbone of the team, I feel, is in the centre of midfield. McStay and Collins, two outstanding players. I think Grant will play more of a holding role. Donnelly looking a bit of wet on the right-hand side. And up front, Andreas Tom and Walker. Tom's made an excellent start to his career in Scotland. Already scored four goals. He'll be the man that Southern are looking forward to tonight. So Rangers have had the chance to freshen up their side from Saturday's match against Falkirk. They bring back Stephen Wright, Paul Gascoigne, Brian Loudrop and Ali McCoist, who were missing on Saturday, leaving out Craig Moore, Gordon Jury, Alexei Mikhalichenko, and Neil Murray. So McCoist with Lodrop and Oleg Selenko in attack. The Rangers are playing with three centre-backs. It's a style that we've become familiar with in England this season. So many sides have played this way. I think the reason why Walter Smith is doing that is because of his European campaign. There you see McLaren, Petrick and Goff, and the two wing-backs, Wright and Robertson. Central midfield, Miller and Gascoigne, and as I say, Loudrop linking in between Miller and Gascoigne and McCoy and Solanco. So, total bedlam for the start of the first all term match of the season. The Coca Cola Cup quarter final, it's played to a death tonight. There will be a winner and a loser over the next couple of hours or so. And Celtic get the match underway. Nearly touched there for Tosh McKinley. And John Collins in ball straight away also. Rangers dropping into that three-man center defense immediately. First involvement there by Paul Gascoigne. It's a free kick to Celtic. The victim there was Paul McStay. Well, Pierre Van Hoyden missing from the Celtic side there. Loses one dimension of the attacking possibilities for Celtic on these set pieces. That's Tom Boyd. Well, the setting in process underway. Six players out there who haven't played an old firm match before for Rangers Wright, Petrich, Gascoigne, and Selenko. And for Celtic, Hughes and Tom. Yes, you mentioned the players there who haven't played this derby. The players I'm looking forward with great interest to see how they cope with this are the foreign players. I think the British players are more accustomed to the aggressive style of this game, but it's a real eye there for these foreign players. Alex Salenko sampling this now for the first time. Two million pounds from Valencia this summer. Right with Salenko holding off Boyd with Gascoigne. Pressure there from Collins. Strong tackle again from John Collins. Good recovery work by Miller. Lauber operating on the right. Well, looking for a foul there, but he had lost possession. This is McStay. And Miller putting pressure on in the middle of the field there. This is Paul McStay finding space again very intelligently for Celtic. Donnelly's first involvement. There again, Collins has found space. Delightful first touch from John Collins. Well, they had options on the left, Josh McKinley through the middle, Walker and Tom, but he tried to take on Durham from long range. Well, Collins has made a good start to the season. He gets it onto his left foot. He's not afraid to shoot. And as you see there, that one goes harmlessly over the bar. But it's interesting that Collins and McStay have made a great start. Very, very important in the central midfield area, just who dominates most. Interesting too to see that Paul McStay is playing in Paul Gascoigne's area, right in the centre of the field. Peter Grant playing in the right of the midfield trio. Gordon's long clearance, there's John Hughes. Now Tom. Barter goes ahead of Donnelly. 
to go there. Lloyd closing down the space. Crunching tackle there from Charlie Miller. Then from David Robertson. The referee worries play on. Intricate footwork there from Donnelly. And the ricochet means a goal kick to Rangers. But Charlie Miller and David Robertson serving notice early on of their commitment for these tackles. Well, it's a ferocious challenge with Miller. The second one comes in very late for Robertson. It's what you come to expect in these games. I'm not saying it's right. I hope we don't see too much of it. There's so many outstanding individuals on here. But we don't need that sort of tackle. Well, it certainly looks as though 19-year-old Charlie Miller is well wound up for the match, going by his first two or three challenges. This is McLaren. Robertson did well in the air. Dominic Blair for Celtic was Boyd. Margaret using Petrich at the back. Petrich getting some abuse from the Celtic supporters. He was reckoned to be on his way to Celtic Park before he suddenly signed for Rangers. Good running by Donnelly away from Miller. This is Tom. And Simon Donnelly taken out of the play there by Charlie Miller after the pass had been released. That's what's upsetting Celtic supporters. Good strong running there from Donnelly. Gets it in to Tom. Onto his left foot. Once again over the bar. Well, that was Goff, in fact, who made the challenge after the pass had been released on Donnelly. This is Tom. Tackled by Goff. Gascoigne and Collins. Well, some searing tackles in the early stages of the match. The referee clearly going to have to call on his vast experience here to keep a firm grip on the proceedings, but still allowed to play the flow. Here's Barta. Tackled instantly there by Robertson. Supporting superbly from midfield. And they go, very calm indeed. McCoy getting the better little boy in the air. And even now McCoy putting tackles in. But quite clearly, Saudi will make a better start. I think the reason being that Donnelly, McStay, Grant and Collins have taken a firm grip on the midfield. Rangers do look a little bit short in that area. As I said, a great responsibility on Gascoigne. Layoff from Solenko. This is loud of a chance to run at the defence. He's in the clear here. This is Solenko. It was a chance, all right. The best opening of the match so far, created by Brian Loudrop. Well, that's what Loudrop's capable of doing. He gets past two defenders. Not particularly good challenge. He really takes Solenko by surprise, and he's really scuffed his shot. Certainly a good opening and uh, the best chance of the game. Hello with Peter Grant, they're in direct opposition, two very determined characters. Here's Grant again. Out Donnelly. Cruz to Vata. Out Donnelly. Tom. Tackle came from Gascoigne. Not happy about that, he thought it should have been a throw. 